you for joining our Wednesday evening Bible study. Please stay tuned for some important announcements immediately following the service. Wherever you're at, you can go ahead and give God some praise. Wherever you're at, the, the praises of God shall go up because God inhabits the praises of his people. How many of you know God made a way? Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, God has made a way from you. Whether it's in your relationships, whether uh, it's in your finances, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your ministry, whether it's in your business, God has the ability to make ways in our lives. And I'm grateful that God has made it. He's made a way. You made a way. When our back was against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made you. When our back was against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you Let's sing it again, wherever you're at Say, you made a way When our back was against the wall When, when our back was against the wall and it looked as if it was over, made a way. And we're standing here. Oh, let's sing it one more time. Get that in your spirit. You made a way. Made a way. When our back was against the wall. And it looked as if it was over, you made and we're standing here, and we're standing here only because you move mountains, you move mountains, you call water, you call water with your power, with your power. There is nothing that's impossible. We serve a great God, and we're standing, and we're standing here only. Sing it again. You move, you move mountains. You call the walls, you call the walls to fall with your power. Your power. For miracles, for miracles, there is nothing, there is nothing that's impossible. impossible. And we're standing here, standing here. Only. only. Sing it again. You move, you move mountains. You call the walls, you call the walls. Don't know how, don't know how, but you 
coming from First King, one of the great joys for me is that we get to preach to people all over the world. We get uh, letters and we get emails from people all over the world. We get comments. Got one from one of the uh, people that I met when I was preaching in Cuba and uh, just grateful that the Lord has blessed us to touch so many lives. For many of you, uh, I get the opportunity to be your online pastor and for that I am grateful. I want to encourage you as we go through this time of challenge that it's not going to always be like this. That the hope and the promise that every believer has is that God is going to fix our situation. It's, it's going to get better. God's going to bring us back. We live our lives in these dry places, but the promise from the Lord is that he will give us strength. He'll keep us. He'll take care of us. He'll protect us. And you got to be open to God because God will send strength uh, in strange sources. And you've got to keep your mind open because as the Lord gives us these strength from strange sources, you've got to know that the promise is he's going to bring us back from these dry places. Somebody listening to me right now, you're just about ready to quit. I've just stopped by to encourage you to hold on a little while longer. And God has come to give you strength from strange sources. And he's going to bring you back from your dry place. Look with me, won't you, at those words that Reverend Oza shared with us today. First Kings, the 18th chapter, starting in verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees, and he said to his servant, Go up, now look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot, go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rolled away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The grass withers, the flowers thereof faded away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk about strength from strange sources coming back from dry places. It's an interesting story, this story of Elijah the prophet and Ahab the king. Elijah uh, tells us, we are told, uh, that he says to the king, in chapter 17, that there's not going to be any rain for three years. He pronounces the drought in Israel, and as he pronounces the drought in Israel, we uh, 
uh, have an understanding that, that the prophet has to live under the same punishing pronouncements that he declares to others. That the prophet doesn't get to go somewhere and hide, but what God does promise to do is to take care of him even in dry seasons. The announcement comes that because of the wickedness of the land, uh, God's going to send judgment and there's going to be a drought because of a wicked leader. He goes now, and the Bible says that after God decides that uh, the king now finds himself going to his winter place and while he is here, the drought comes and in chapter 18, we see just the hand of God when uh, God sends the announcement by the prophet to go and tell him about the drought, God says to the prophet, you go and go down by the brook Cherith. I'm going to provide for you there. When the brook dried up, he says, go, there's a widow in Zarephath, and I've provided for you there. When he gets there, the boy dies, and uh, the barrel was about to be depleted, but God took care of a dry brook, a dead boy, and a depleted barrel. And the Bible says that as he does this for the prophet, uh, the prophet understands just how powerful God is. And then he goes, and here in chapter 18, if it wasn't enough how God had handled the dry brook or the depleted barrel or even the dead boy, he, we see him defeating Baal because the prophets of Baal have said that our God is greater than your God. And I need to suggest to you that it's what you do for God in the private that will move God to give you a public stage. Some prophet listening to me, you've been waiting on a public stage, but God says during this time of pandemic, let's spend some time together. And when I fix you in the private, I'll use you in the public. Preach, D-A-I, I am, I am. And so the text says that here in verse 41, God has said to the prophet, go tell the king that the drought's about to be over. The first thing I think this text talks about is the promise of the return. That God says, I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to send the rainy season back. But what's interesting is that God does not talk to the king. God talks to the prophet. And while the king is out doing talk, the prophet is who God sends the advice. To too many of us in this time of crisis, we've been looking at the state house and the white house but the word is going to come to the church house. And the encouragement comes because while the king was up talking, the Bible says that when the prophet sent his servant to go tell the king that there's going to be some rain, that while the king was on the mic, that the prophet was on his knees and it was not the talk from the king, but the prayers of the prophet. Help me, Holy Ghost, while I try to preach your word. God talks to the preacher, and, and, and the prophet says that, 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 that I hear. He says it in the text. It's, it's interesting to me that, that the prophet says right, right here in the text, go, 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 go tell him that I hear the sound. There is the sound. Not the sight, but, but the sound, not the smell. You, you, you know you can smell rain. And what's interesting is that the prophet says, I'm going on what I heard God say. Here, here, here's a shout in this text. You got to be careful because seasons are not determined by conditions. They are determined by the calendar. That, that the season is not determined by what is seen, but by what is... Well, you, it, it, it's, it's, it's been 40 some degrees, but, but the calendar says it's spring. And, and you got to be careful because if you're not careful, you'll spend your whole life looking at conditions and you will miss your season because the season isn't determined by the condition. It's determined by what's written on the calendar. And I've stopped by to tell somebody that even though the conditions may be dry, the prophet said, God says it's raining time. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shout myself this morning. I ain't playing. He, he says, he says, he says, get ready. Somebody listening to me, you need to quit looking at what's around and look at what's been written and hear what the Lord says so you can walk because you will miss your season looking at conditions and not understanding is based upon what's written. And what the prophet says is it's raining time. 
God says it's about to rain. He does not clear it with the prophet, and he does not give the prophet the option to change the situation. He doesn't let him change what is to be said. He says, tell it like I tell you. And sometimes the prophet has to be in a position where even he can't see the conditions, but he has heard it, not based upon what I see, but I hear the sound of rain. I need to tell somebody, it can rain in your life even in a drought. God knows how to find you. He knows how to find you when you're hiding in brooks like Cherith. He knows how to find you when you go to Zarephath. And then he'll say it's time to rain. You know, the reality is for the, 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 this, 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 the pronouncement of the return, it is that the mailman comes by my house every day. And it, it, it is illegal for him to change the mail that I get. He, he just has to bring what's been mailed to me. If I got a bill, he can't make it be a check. If I got a check, he can't hide it. The postman is not, does not decide my mail. He just delivers my mail. And that is the prophet's job. He does not decide. He just delivers. But now and then, he lets me sneak in a little commentary. But I can't change the mail I've been called to deliver. There, there, there is the promise of the return. Go, 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 go get ready because I hear the sound of rain. But, but, but then the text says a word about the perseverance for the return. I, I, I didn't make it up. It's right here in the text. Elijah is, is praying. He's his, this, this place of humility. It almost, it, it almost echoes to me those voices of my childhood. Here I am, knee bent and body bowed. The Bible says his face is towards Mother Earth. And as he is praying, he tells his servant, go, go, go look to see if you see anything. Servant goes, first time he comes back, say, I don't, I don't see nothing. He, he was from the south. I, I don't see nothing. He says, go back again. I, I don't see anything. Go back seven times, he sends him. The idea here is this idea of perseverance, that God is not obligated uh, to give us immediate blessings. We, we love to say he's an on-time God, but I need to tell you he operates on his own time. He, he, he's an on-time God, but it's on his own time. And the God we serve does not wear a watch, nor does he have a calendar. Because God knows time not by its limitations, but by its creation. That you and I operate in what the Greeks call chronos, this time. We got to be somewhere at a certain time. God operates in kairos, his own time. He operates in the season. And God is not obligated to give instant blessings. Go back. And you and I must have the conviction that when it doesn't happen like we want it to, to go back another time. I, I, I don't see it now. Go, go back. I, I can't feel it now. Go back. And it's interesting to me that the prophet sends hit seven times. And somebody listening to me, I stop by to tell you that, that you've got to learn how to persevere in prayer. You've got to be persistent in prayer. Praying for a job, go back. It didn't happen this time, go back. Asking God for a house, go, go back. Praying over a ministry, it ain't like, go, go back. Praying for a healing, I, go, go back. Go, go, go back again, go, go back again, because if where you are doesn't look like where God promised, then you are not finished with your journey. Go back again, praying over a minute. Go, go back, praying for a healing. Go back, praying for a child. Go back. Testimony is that seven times he goes, and you, you know that in the Bible, seven is that, that number of, of perfection. It's the number of completeness. On the seventh day, not because he was tired, but because he was finished, God rested. Joshua is given that, that uh, the children of Israel had seven covenants with God. They, they had seven feasts with God. Joshua was told to march around 
Jericho seven days and uh, on that seventh day march around seven times and on that seventh time have seven priests to blow seven trumpets of the ram's horn and the wall will come down. John gives us seven I am's of Jesus and the book of Revelation there are seven seas, there are seven churches and seven lampsticks and seven stars and seven angels. It, it is that number of completion. I know you can't can't see what God is doing. I know you're just about ready to give up, but I need to tell you that if you wait for that seventh time, God will do what he said. God didn't promise that it was going to be easy, but he did promise to be faithful. I, I, I want you to know your return is on the way, but you got to be persistent in your return. Go, go back. You, you've got to be persistent. It, it, it's, it's, it's on the way. This, this text says not only a word about uh, the persistence for the return and the pronouncement of the return, but, but it says a word about the peculiarity of the return. It's, 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 it's peculiar what he does. Look, look in the text. I'm, I'm, I'm not making it up. He says, go back. Now, now, the whole area has been in drought. Now, certainly, God is going to send some major hurricane through here. God's going to get a tornado to pick up a typhoon. God going, he said, what do you see? He said, I see a, a, a cloud the size of a, it, it, it doesn't even, not, not in, the, it, 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 in the King James it says hand, but, 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 but in the Hebrew it really says, it, it, it says a fist. Now, now, it's interesting, it's just me, that it's peculiar, first of all, in size. Because if you're going to uh, flood the whole land, you don't want a man's fist. How many times have we missed blessings because it didn't look like what we thought it should? Somebody walked away from a ministry because you said, I, I wasn't designed to be with this few people. And we seem to forget the words that come to us, despise not the days of small beginning. And, 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 and we have missed uh, because God is able to do amazing things with, with, with just small amounts. It, it, I, 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 when we, have, we were at home and it looked like, even now we've been at home, it looked like we do more laundry now than, than, than we ever did. And, and you know, they advertise and they brag about how much one quart. It, it's just small. They, they, they got, when I, when I was a boy, you pour half a bottle in or you take a whole cup of detergent. Now they just got these little pods and they brag about how much a quart can do. But, but before they get finished, I want to tell them that God took six quarts of blood and paid for the sins of the whole world. At Calvary, he was. That's why you got to be careful. G G Jesus took a few fish and a few loaves and turned it into a feast and said to the disciples, here's some for you to take. You, you got to be careful. It, it was a small child that led Naaman the king to go by and see the prophet, and he was able, uh, who dipped seven times in the Jordan, he was able to be here. You, you got to be careful that you don't miss. Because what God will do is, God will say, it's not just the size, but it's the source. Because watch what he says. He says, I see a fist, but it's coming out of the sea. And what misses most folk is that we want to judge size, but we ignore source. Because God does not send blessings always the way we want. And God will tuck a blessing into what we might think is a curse. God knows how to hide, but it is the connection to him as the source. And you got to be careful that you don't throw away the size and forget about the source. Because God has a peculiar way. December 25th, 2004, in Maluba, Indonesia. The Christians wanted to celebrate, and it was a predominantly Muslim country. And they said to the Christians, if you want to celebrate Christmas, you can't do it here. You got to go out on that hill over there. there there's, a, there's a mountain outside of town. You can go out and celebrate. And the Christians, 400 of them, went to celebrate Christmas. 
On December 25th, as they're celebrating Christmas with an all-day mass, they decide to stay the night. December 26th in Maluba, which has now had its name changed. In about 2013, they changed the name. Uh, 9.0 earthquake on the Richter scale came through and destroyed the city once it created a tsunami that killed 80% of the population. But the 400 Christians were saved because they were out on a... There ought to be somebody listening to me at home who knows what it's like to be saved on a hill. You've got to be careful how you run because God will hide deliverance in what seems like your destruction. God will send you strength from what looks like a place of sorrow. God will give you power from what appears to be pain. God will give you joy when it looks like you've been jeered. He'll give you a hallelujah in the midst of your hurt. God says to you, I know you don't like it, but I've tied deliverance up to it. Somebody listening to me right now, you want to be back in your church preaching to your people, but, but let me tell you what God will do. God will let a pastor who's been used to preaching to 40 people now preach to 400. God will let a church that was ministering to five families now minister to 50. And God will let a church that's been preaching to 1,000 now preach to 6,000. You, you got to be careful because God knows how to hide our deliverance and what appears to be our detriment. This text says a word about the pronouncement of the return. This, this, this text says a word about... Uh, the peculiarity of the return. This text says a word about the persistence of the return, but this text concludes with a word about the praise after the return. It's, it's in the text. I'm not making it up. When, when Elijah, and, 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 and here's what I like about Elijah, it does not take uh, the flood for Elijah to do what God says. Elijah goes back and says to Ahab, now you get up and get ready. And, and God knew the right prophet to have because I, I wouldn't have been that kind. He says to him, you've got to leave from your summer home if you're going to make it to the capital because there's so much coming that it's about to flood you right where you are. He says to him, you get ready to go. And here is what's amazing to me is how God allows it to rain on both the just and the unjust. The word from the prophet comes and Elijah goes and tells him, get, get ready. And then the Bible says something interesting about Elijah. He says, it says that he girded up his loins and takes what is about a 21 kilometer, a little over 17, almost 17 miles, and he starts to run, and he outruns the chariot. That God, through some supernatural power, the prophet who has spent his life, and he says that the rain is going to come, and here is a shout in this text to every prophet who hears me. The rain came, and the flood came, and most of us, if we're honest, brother prophets, we spend our lives between dusty spots and muddy spots. And the prophet must have the kind of mentality that says whether it's dust or mud, I'm going to trust the God who's in charge. If somebody listening to me today, you, you can testify that there have been spots in your life where there was the scarcity of dust or there have been the abundance of mud. We spend our lives, but if you're not careful, just like you can die in a drought, you can get stuck in mud. And so you and I must depend upon the same God who is in charge. Here is what he says to the prophet. He says to him, uh, the prophet says to him, get ready because God is about to send rain your way. And as he sends it his way, the Bible says to us that the prophet girds himself and with supernatural strength, because God has just empowered him, he takes out running. I, I was reading the other day, and Christopher Davis from down in Memphis was talking about his grandfather. He said his grandfather, Samuel Morris, lived in a community named Snowden. And he tells the story of his grandfather. When his grandfather was a little boy, he had gone to town with his mother. He said that there were three major stores in town that the people went to, and when they got there, Snowden was overtaken by a sandstorm. That as his mother grabs his hand and they begin to run to the store, they became separated. He says his grandfather says that when they became separated, that when the storm blew over, 
his grandfather went to the first store and asked the lady had he seen his mother. Said that his grandfather began to cry because the lady had not seen his mother. He goes to the second store and when he gets to the second store, he was told the same thing. No, she's not been in here. Terrified and frightened, broken down, he goes to the third store. He says that when he got to the third store that there was his grandmother in the back of the store drinking a Coca-Cola. He said that his grandfather said, Mama, I was afraid. Mama, I didn't think I'd see you again. Mama, I was worried about you, but you were drinking a Coke. He said that his grandmother told his granddaddy that I knew that when the dust settled, it was going to be all right. And that's my word that I leave to you, West Side. I know it's dusty right now, but I got a sneaking suspicion that when the dust settles, everything is going to be all right. We might be crying right now, but when the dust settles, God will dry our tears away. It might be rough right now, but when the dust settles, Everything will be all right. Ask me how I know. Because one Friday at a place called Calvary, he died. I said he died. He died till creation trembled. He died till nature got disorganized. He died until the sun wouldn't shine but I'm so glad that when the dust settled bright early on Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand is there any 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 anybody who know it's gonna be all right I know it's rough but I've got a feeling that God's gonna turn it around It won't always be like this The Lord is perfecting that concerning me Anybody here know it's turning around It's turning around in my affairs It's turning around on my job It's turning around in my finances it's turning around. Ain't it all right? Can you say yes? Say yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He'll turn it around. Won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in my favor. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. Glory! Don't you quit on him. You can come back from a dry place. Glory, glory! He's turning it around. Turning it around. If I were you, right where I was, I'd give my situation to the Lord. I, I know some of you listen every day. Hallelujah. Listen, I've heard enough from the king. I'm not listening to the president. I want to hear what the prophet says. Because the king of kings has the solution. And I want you to give your situation to God. Somebody listening to me, you've never made conscious effort to have a meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ it's a good time now he can turn it around somebody your marriage is strange your financial affairs your your business affairs affairs within your family as it relates to relationships he can turn those around if you'll give him a chance you can accept him right where you are 
music ministry is going to sing. When they get through singing, I'll come with a closing prayer and a benediction. Not defeated, cast down, but hallelujah. I'm not destroyed. There are times I don't understand. Glory, glory. But I believe. It's turning around for me. See, I've had struggles and disappointments. There are times I felt so alone. And some of my friends, they they let me down but I believe it's turning around for me say around for me around for me around for me around It's turning around for me, around for me, around for me, around for me. It's turning around for me, around for me, around for me. you're facing in your house I tell you what you do you, you just need to stand right where you are and, and just tell yourself it's it's turning around turn it around it's it's turning around I got some bad news yet but it's turning around I'm about to lose my mind boxed up in this house but it's around for me around for me around for me it's it's turning around around for me around for me Get over the country. Around. Around for me. I speak it over our city. Around. Around for me. I speak it over the county and the state. Around for me. Turn it around. Over the world.
It's turning around. It's turning around. It, it won't always turn it around for me. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning us. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in our favor. And it's turning around. And I've got the persistence to say if it's later, sooner. It'll turn sooner or later. I said sooner. It's got to turn in my favor. It's turning around, turning around for me. For me. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go my family and the Lord be with you. Support our ministry online through our website, the WBC app, or you can drop your offering off at the church Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. blessed and safe week and we will see you Sunday morning on Facebook, YouTube, WBCChurch.org or the WBC mobile app.